Welcome to Ezika Academy YouTube channel. In this lecture, I will examine divisional performance evaluation. If you are coming across my lecture for the first time, please like the video, share it with others, and subscribe so that you don't miss my upcoming video. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you. God bless you. What do you mean by division? Division is a unit or segment of an organization whose performance can be appraised. A unit or segment of an organization whose performance can be appraised. So the manager of each division is responsible for the performance of its units or division. In a large organization, it may be impossible for the manager to oversee the entire activity of his unit. So he may need to delegate authority to his or her subordinates. That delegation is called decentralized structure. Decentralization. That is when an authority is delegated to the subordinates. So meaning that the top level management want to overlook, want to avoid the work overload. So he or she may decide to delegate authority to his or her subordinates. So a decentralized structure is a divisional structure where the authority are delegated to the subordinates. Why centralized or centralization? Centralization is a, a, a divisionalized structure where the authority for decision making rested on the top level management only. The authority are in hands of the top level manager. But where the authority, such authority are delegated to the lower level management body, that is decentralization or decentralized structure. So we have responsibility, responsibility, Responsibility accounting. Responsibility accounting is an accounting system that segregates revenues and costs. An accounting system that segregates revenue and cost into areas of personal responsibility in order to assess the performance attained by person to whom authority has been assigned. Responsibility accounting is an accounting system that segregates revenue and cost into areas of personal responsibility in order to assess the performance attained by person to whom authority has been assigned. That is the definition of responsibility accounting according to CIMA in their official technologies. Types of responsibility. Responsibility centers. Types of responsibility center. Number one, we have cost center. Cost center. Cost center is a department for which costs are established. A department for which costs are established in order to measure the cost of output produced by the center. The department for which costs are established in order to measure the cost of output, put, output produced by the center. I want you to know that cost center incur costs but has no revenue stream. They incur costs, but they have no revenue streams. Number two, we have the investment center. Investment. Investment center. Investment center. Investment center is a division where the manager is responsible for the cost of the divisions, the revenue, its earns, and the investment decisions. 
Meaning that manager of E of that division is responsible for three things. Number one, we have the cost of that division, the revenue of the division, and the investment decision. So these are the three things we have in the investment center. Number three, we have the profit center. Profit center. Profit center. Profit center is the depart is the department for which costs and revenue are established. The department for which costs and revenue are established. That is the profit center. So meaning that there are two things that will be established in the profit center. Number one, we have the cost. Number two, we have revenue. When your cost is marked against the revenue, you have the profit. So that is profit center. Number four, we have the revenue center. Revenue center. Revenue center is the department for which revenues are established. The department for which revenues are established. Methods of measuring divisional performance. Divisional performance or the performance of a division can be measured in several ways. But for the purpose of this lecture, I will examine the three commonest methods. Number one is return on capital employed. Employed. Rules. Or better still, you can call it return on investment. Roy. Number two method is absolute divisional profit. Absolute divisional profit. The third method is residual income. These three methods will be examined. Return on investment. Return on investment. This is the profit of the division expressed as a percentage of capital employed. The profit of the division expressed as a percentage of capital employed. That means return on investment, ROI, equal to, ROI equal to divisional profit, divisional profit over capital employed. Divisional profit over capital employed times 100 over 1. So your capital employed could be capital employed. Capital employed could be, number one, net assets. So where your capital employed is net assets, that means ROI will be equal to divisional profit over divisional net assets. Divisional net asset. And where your capital employed is investment. So your ROI will not be divisional profit over divisional investment. Your capital employed could be total assets. So where it is total asset, that means the, the ROI becomes divisional profit over divisional total assets. Uh, if you say net asset, net asset is equal to total assets minus current liabilities. And you can say capital employed equals to your equity plus interest bearing loans. And you can as well say capital employed equals to equity 
So it depends on the information provided in the question. So where your equity is provided, what you are given is equity. That means your denominator becomes divisional equity. And if it is investment, you use investment. If it is net asset, you use net asset. So the numerator divisional profit it should be the controllable profit. Your controllable profit. Your controllable profit will be divisional revenue, less controllable cost. But in most cases, accounting profit is used. In most cases, your numerator will use accounting profit. Profit is usually measured as an accounting profit after the deduction of depreciation charge on non-current asset. The accounting profit after depreciation on non-current asset has been deducted. That is the divisional profit. Number two is absolute divisional profit. Absolute. Absolute divisional profit. This is the second method I'm going to examine. So, but for if you use ROI, the division that has the highest ROI is most preferable. And where you have the target rate of return set, so the one that promising the rate of the target rate will be recommended. If you are given the target rate to be 30%, that means any investment with 30% rate of returns is acceptable. But if it is less than 30%, it's not to be accepted. And where the target rate is not given, you go for the one with the highest ROI. So absolute divisional profit. This is the profit from the divisional operation. You use the profit from the divisional operation, meaning that you will go for the division with the highest divisional profit. The third method I'm going to examine is the residual income. Residual income. Residual income. Residual income is the divisional profit less inputted interest charge on capital employed. Residual income will be divisional profit less inputted interest charge on capital employed. Residual income. We have divisional profit. Profit. You less inputted interest. To get your inputted interest, you will be given cost of capital, rate of returns. The one you are given in the question, your cost of capital, COC mean cost of capital. You multiply by your investment. If your investment is, is given, you use investment. If it is net asset or your capital employed, you multiply your cost of capital by the capital employed or investment or net asset, depending on whichever one is given in the question. So this will give you the inputted interest. If you now subtract your inputted interest, you get the residual, residual income. Any investment with positive residual income is viable. Or you go for the investment with the highest residual income. These are the three methods of measuring divisional performance. I'm going to examine in this video. Now let's take a question from ICANN, November 2023, Performance Management. Example, Ingerige and Sons Limited has four operating divisions, which are spread into four cities in Nigeria, Lagos, Kano, Gumbe, and Enugu. These divisions are treated as investment centers for the purpose of performance reporting. The following information is available. You have serial number, particulars, Lagos, Kano, Gombe, and Enugu. One, divisional investment, 10 million, 4 million, 3 million, and 7 million, respectively. Divisional sales, 53 million, 23 million, 24.6 million, and 29.4 million. Three, divisional variable cost, 50 million, 22 million, 23.4 million, and 27.4 million. Four, divisional fixed cost. We have 1.5 million, 750,000, 600,000, and 800,000. The company's annual fixed cost is 1.3 million, which is apportioned to the division on the basis of sales. 
The cost of capital for Ingerige and Sons Limited is 7.5% required. One, evaluate the performance of the division using ROI method, residual income method. Two, reevaluate the residual income situation of the company, given that the cost of capital is 10%. This question is obtained from ICANN November 2023 Performance Management. Now let's have the solution. Solution. The name of the entity is Nge, Rige and Sons Limited. If you go by the requirement one, you are to evaluate the performance of the division using ROI method. And what is ROI? Return on investment. Return on investment is divisional profit. Divisional profit over divisional net assets. Divisional net assets times 100. This is the formula for calculating the return on investment, ROI. Now we have four divisions. We have Enugu, we have Gombe, we have Kano, We equally have Lagos. For the purpose of ROI calculation, you want to calculate the numerator, divisional profit. Divisional profit. To calculate divisional profit, you prepare the income statement. Income statement, that is the statement of profit or loss of each division. So we have Lagos, Kano, Gombe, and Enugu. These are the four divisions Lagos, Kano, Gombe, Enugu. To prepare the income statement, you are given the divisional sales 53 million, 23 million, 24.6 million, and 29.4 million. So learn, let's have divisional sales. Division says, which is 53 million, 23 million, then we have 24.6 million, then we equally have 29.4 million. That is the division now says. Back to the question. You are given divisional variable cost. Divisional variable cost, which is 50 million, 22 million, 23.4 million, and 27.4 million. Divisional, divisional variable cost. For Lagos, we have 50 million. For Kano, we have 22 million. For Gombe, we have 23.4 million. And uh, for Enugu, we have uh, 27.4 million. Remember, says less variable cost will give you the contribution. So this is the divisional contribution. 53 million minus 50 million, that will be 3 million. Contribution of 3 million for Lagos Division. 23 minus 22, that is 1 million for Kano Division. For Gombe Division, we have 1.2 million. 1.2 million. A bit one, yes, 1.2 million. Then this will be 
nine minus seven, that is two million. So that is for each of the division, that is the contribution. Back to the question. You are given divisional fixed cost. These are the specific fixed cost. 1.5 million, 750,000, 60,000. I mean, 750,000, 600,000, and 800,000. That is the specific fixed cost. The fixed cost of each division. Specific fixed cost. For Lagos division, we have 1.5 million. For Kano, we have 750,000. Then for Gombe, we have 600,000. And then for Enugu, we have 800,000. These are the specific fixed costs of each of the divisions. Back to the question. The company's annual fixed cost is 1.3 million. I give an annual fixed cost of 1.3 million, which is apportioned to the division on the basis of sales. You have to apportion this 1.3 million on the basis of sales. So remember, the sales of Lagos Division 53 million, Kano 23 million, Gumbe 24.6 million, and the Enugu 29.4 million. So we want to use that sales to apportion the fixed cost. Apportionment fixed cost. Apportionment fixed cost. You no, know, you have to use your sales to apportion it. The sales for Lagos division, Lagos, you have 53 million as Lagos sales, 53 million. So I'm adding K because we are still there with three zeros. After Lagos, we have Kano. The sales of Kano. Division is 23 million. I'm left with three zeros. After Kano, we have Gombe. The sales of Gombe division is 24.6 million. Then for Enugu, you have 29.4 million. 29.4 million. If you add, if you sum up all the sales, you have 53 million plus 23 million plus 24.6 million plus 29.4 million. Our set is totaled 130 million. 130 million. Now you now want to apportion the fixed cost of 1.3 million. Using your sales, you want to apportion it on the basis of sales. So, the fixed cost you want to apportion is 1.3 million. So, for Lagos, you have 53 million over the total is 130 million times 1.3 million. So that gives us 1.3 million divided by 130 million times uh, 53 million. That will be 530, 530 million. For Kano, you have 23 million. Over 130 million times 1.3 million. That gives us 230 million. For Gombe, you have 24.6 million out of 130 million times 1.3 million. That gives us, we have uh, 246 million. Then for Enugu, you have 29.4 million out of 130 million times 1.3 million. That gives us 294 million. So, 
let's have a portion a portion feast cost for lagos we got 530 million for lagos we have a uh, 530 million this is 530000 not 530 million no it was 1.3 million we are portioned for Kano division Kano division we have 230000 230000 for Gombe division you have 246000 246000 for Enugu division you have 294000 94,000. By the time you subtract the fixed cost from the contribution, you arrive at the divisional net profit. Net profit. So we have 3 million minus 1.5 million minus 530,000. So we have the net profit of 970,000 for division. That for Lagos division. For Kano division, we have 1 million minus 750,000 minus 230,000. So we have the net profit of 20 million. Then for Gombe, we have 1.2 million minus 600,000 minus 246. 46,000. So, we have 354,000. For Enugu division, 2 million minus 800,000 minus 294,000. So, we have 906,000. Now, let's compute the ROI. Return on investment. Remember, I've told you that return on investment equal to divisional profit. Profit over divisional net assets. Net assets times 100. Net assets or capital employed. So, for Lagos division, divisional profit is 970,000 divided by what is the Lagos? Division net assets. Back to the question. You have divisional investment. You can have the denominator to be divisional investment. Your investment is still your asset, which is 10 million. So, uh, let me show you to divisional investment. Since it was provided as investment in the question. Divisional investment. Over 10 million. Times 100. So for Lagos, 970 divided by 10 million times 100, that is 9.7%. 9.7%. Or if you want to leave your answer in decimal, so you will have it as 0 0.097. Then for Kano division, Kano. The divisional profit for Kano is 20 million. That is for Kano. 20,000, I mean. 20,000. And how much is the net asset of Kano division? Or investment of Kano? We have 4 million. So, 4 million times 100 over 1. So, 20 divided by 4 million times 100. That is 0 0.5 percent. Or, if you don't want to, if you want to leave your answer as decimal, it will be 0 0.005. For Gombe division, Gombe. So, Gombe division. The net profit is 354,000. 
354,000. How much is the investment of Gombe? Back to the question. The investment is 3 million. Over 3 million times 100 over what? 354 divided by 3. Eleven point eight percent, or if you want to leave it as decimal, so you have zero point one one eight. Then we also have for Enugu division, Enugu, Enugu division. You have the profit of nine zero six thousand, nine zero six. Thousand. How much is the investment of Enugu Division? Back to the question. Divisional investment, you have seven million. Seven million. Times hundred. Nine zero six. What about seven million times hundred? So we have. 12.9%. If you want to leave your answer as decimal, it will be 0 0.129. 0 0.129. Now, if you look at the return on investment, any good division has the highest return of investment. Therefore, any good division is recommended. The entity should focus on Enugu division. So Enugu division is doing better on the basis of return on investment. You also have to use residual income method. Residual income. Residual income. Residual income is divisional profit. You know you have four divisions. Lagos. You have Kano. You call it have Gombe and Enugu. You want to use residual income method to appraise the performance of the four divisions. So if you want to use residual income, Residual income is divisional profit. Divisional profit. That is your net profit. For, division, for Lagos division, we have 970. For Kano division, you have 20,000. For Gombe division, you have 354. For Enugu division, you have 906. So, Lagos Division, 970,000. For Kano, 20,000. For Gombe, 354. And for Enugu, 906. Then from this, you less inputted cost or inputted interest. Inputted interest. Now, back to the question. You were told. The cost of capital for Ingerige and Sons Limited is 7.5%. So, input cost, which will be 7.5% on investment. Uh, you calculate 7.5% of the divisional investment. Back to the question how much is the investment of Lagos, of Kano? of Gombe and of Enugu. Back to the question. Divisional investment. Lagos, 10 million. Kano, 4 million. Gombe, 3 million. Enugu, 7 million. So you calculate 7.5% of each of the investment. For Lagos now, what is 7.5% of, you know, investment of Lagos is 10 million. 7.5% of 10 million. That gives us 750,000. 
the investment of Kano is given to be 4 million, 7.5% of 4 million. Or maybe I should show it so that for Lagos, 7.5% of 10 million. That gives us 750,000. The second division is Kano. 7.5% of investment of Kano is 4 million. 7.5% of 4 million. That gives us 300,000. Kano, 300,000. Gombe. 7.5% how much is the investment of Gombe? 3 million. 7.5% of 3 million. 7.5% of 3 million. That gives us 225,000. That of Enugu. 7.5%. Of seven million, the investment of Enugu is seven million. Seven point five percent of seven point five percent of seven million. That gives us five to five thousand. Five to five thousand. So if you now subtract. The imputed cost or imputed interest from the divisional profit, you have the residual income. Residual income. So 970, 970 minus 750, we have 220. That is for Lagos division. Then this one is a loss of 280. Let's see, do I, this is loss. It's a loss. That is 20 minus 300. Then 354 minus 225. 354 minus 225. So that gives us 129. 129. Then 906. Minus five two five nine zero six minus five two five that is three eighty one three eighty one. So if you look at the residual income, Enugu division has the highest residual income. Therefore, Enugu Limited or division is financially justifiable. So your recommendation should be in favor of Enugu division. You have to pull down your recommendation in each of the case in black and white. So that is the solution to this. To this, that is the calculation of residual income. Roman figure two, reevaluate the residual income situation of the company given that the cost of capital is 10%. If the cost of capital is 10%, you want to reevaluate, you want to recalculate the residual income. For Roman figure two, you want to recalculate the residual income. Now you are given the cost of capital to be 10%, and residual income is divisional profitless inputted, inputted interest. For Lagos, which is 10% of investment, investment in Lagos is 10 million. 10% of 10 million will be 1,000. After Lagos, you have Kano division. Kano. 10% of the net asset or investment of Kano is 4 million. 10% of 4 million will give us 400,000. For Gombe. 
10% of the investment of Gombe. Investment of Gombe amounted to 3 million. 10% of 3 million, that will be 300,000. For Enugu, 10% of the investment in Enugu, which is 7 million. 10% of 7 million, that will be 700,000. So if you now subtract the inputted interest, you get the residual income. 970 minus 1,000, that will be minus 30. 20 minus 400, that will be minus 380. 354 minus 300, that will be minus, that will be plus 54. 906 minus 700, that will be plus 206. Enugu division has the highest residual income. Therefore, Enugu division is recommended. This marks the end of the solution to this question. Please like the video, share it with others, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, Ezekiel.